Hey guys, right before we get into this free hockey tutorial video, I want to remind you that the Frono's Photo Beginner Guide, Go Above and Beyond Auto, is available on froknowsphoto.com slash guide. People have been telling me that after watching this, they just want to go out and shoot and they feel confident that they no longer need to be tied down by auto and they switch into their manual settings and they take full control of their camera and are very confident to go out there and capture amazing images. So if you want to hear more about that guide, it's a three hour long video guide that it's I think it's much better than a college class a lot of people have been telling me that as well that they've learned more from this three-hour video than they learned from their college photography classes so if you'd like to check it out go to fronosphoto.com slash guide and now let's get to your free hockey video hockey video Jared Poland fronosphoto.com I'm here at the Trenton Titans. That's right, Trenton Tun Titans. It's the only hockey in town right now to go and photograph. They so happen to be a minor league team that's affiliated with the Philadelphia Flyers. So I just wanted to come out here and shoot. I want to shoot some hockey. I want to teach you guys about shooting some hockey. And no better place to do that than in the minors because you can have pretty much free reign to get in. So some quick tips right off the bat. If you have a minor league hockey team, baseball team, soccer team, lacrosse team, if you have any type of minor league uh, franchise in your area, give them a call. Tell them that you would like to come in and photograph and in exchange for the passes, you will give them some usage rights to the images to use online. Because most likely they're not going to want to pay for these type of images. There's not a lot of money involved with minor league sports, but it's a great way for you to learn and get involved and meet people. Some of these players may end up in the NHL one day if there still is an NHL uh, at some point. So what am I going to do today? Well, I'm going to walk around. I'm going to try to find the right areas to shoot. There are no photo there are no photo holes today. I looked around, there's no holes in the glass. When you get into the pro arenas, there's holes in the glass, but there are none here. It is what it is. So you have to shoot through the glass. You have to find a clean piece of glass to shoot from. Oh yeah, let me get my stool. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Here we go. CVS sells these bad boys. This is good to carry with you because you need to sit on this in between the rows because you will not have a seat when you're shooting. This will get you at the right level when you're sitting to shoot through the glass. So I'm going to go into different areas because I'm looking for action shots. I'm looking for tight shots of the players skating. Uh, and overall, if we got some fights, I'm going to shoot some of the fights. So settings wise, it's going to get bright in here. Right now they don't have all the lights on, but when pregame skate comes up, they'll get the lights on. I'll test it out there and be ready to go when the game starts. I'm thinking I'm going to shoot with the D4. I probably won't shoot with the D600 tonight. I just want to feel it out for my first time shooting in this arena. So really, that's about it. Are they turning the lights on yet? Nope, still not. So we're going to turn around to the camera in between each period, talk to you about what I'm finding, types of techniques I'm using, and we'll do that. And that's about it. Whoa, get it, get it. That's a puck just went over the glass. You have to be careful about pucks going over the glass. But I found a spot where I want to sit and shoot because this is going to give me a good angle on the goalie and where the action is in front of the net. That's what's important when it comes to shooting hockey is the action in front of the net. You know where things are going to happen. So if I focus in around the goalie, there's usually a defender. There's usually a defender cross-checking a guy who's going to the net who's trying to pick up the trash. That's where you want to be. So this is a pregame skate. I've locked my set settings in. That's a good thing. Uh, I'm shooting with the D4. Got my black wrapping on. Have the first person shooter camera on so that you can uh, see what I'm shooting when I'm shooting it. And really, don't forget, there's other things going on other than the hockey going on the ice. There's actually a kid here and I was photographing him because the reflection was really awesome in the glass. He was basically looking, reflection, bouncing back, focusing on his eyes. Looks really good. So for a good action shot, you want to fill the frame, get the puck in there, get something going in. So in hockey, look at the circles. As guys go around, they're always on a cool angle. It looks really good when you capture them like that. So we're going to keep shooting. We're going to have fun and we'll come back in between periods. Stop it. 
Alright, so we're now in between the first period. It's the first intermission. And this is pretty challenging shooting through glass like this. They've got some fun stuff going on behind me. But, you know, what I am shooting at is one, uh, one twelve fiftieth of a second at f3.5 at 4,000 ISO. Now the D600 can do that. A lot of new cameras can handle that. As long as you're shooting with a 2.8 lens, you can make it work. So it's just, it's an interesting place to be right now. I, with this glass shooting through it, you, you run into issues with, with sharpness and focus because the glass is thick. That's why I was hoping to have a photo hole here and I may ask if they can do that for the future. So that's a challenge. But what you're looking for, for hockey shots, are those nice action shots in front of the net. I may have some popping up on the screen right now, so you can see what's going on in front of the net. But, you know, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna stick to this spot and focus in on certain action shots that happen. We'll see what happens, I don't know yet. Um, and then probably for some future games, I'll come back and shoot from different places around the ice. But, until the next, intermission i'll be back with more information about how we're doing but so far it's good it's just it is a challenge to shoot hockey like this through this glass without a hole just for fun. this in between periods. Okay, so I spent the second period focusing in on the goalie. Um, they have a prospect goalie here who's down from the Flyers, being that the NHL isn't going on. Um, that he's down here playing. So this is a good opportunity to get good pictures of a possible future NHLer. So what did I do to focus in on the goalie? Well, I went into single focus. I went into single focus because I wanted to lock in on the goalie. Now I did part of the period in single focus uh, just in case, you know, to lock in on him just in case people skated across because usually the goalie's going to stay in about one area when they're making a save except when they slide back and forth. So I utilize the AF on button in the back here to get my focus, lock it in, get ready to shoot, and then shoot when the shot presents itself. I do recommend, well, I don't, you know how motor driving isn't my major thing, but I did motor drive a little bit and that allowed me to get some of the pictures that I was able to get tonight because the puck, you want to get the puck in a shot when the goalie's there. So that's what I'm looking for in that. Uh, and then near the end of the period, I switched into continuous, got some cool pictures that way. But the problem you run into is as people cross you, cross as, as the players skate across, you kind of... You kind of lose, watch the camera, 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 thank you. Um, you run into problems when the, when the players skate past because your focus shifts. That's why I recommended going to single. I even went to F4 to give myself a little bit more leeway with the focus to try to get the goalie nice and frozen. Worked pretty well, happy with the results. Now for the third period, I'm going to try and focus in on something else. A good recommendation is each period to focus on, on a different aspect of capturing images. Uh, I did try to find a different place to shoot from. The glass wasn't any good, so I came right back to here to get the, because I knew it would be okay. Go to 
the net. That's a hold. He held his stick. He held his stick. He held his stick. Did you see him holding his stick? He just tucked it into his chest. All right, so we made it through the whole game. The game is over. The Titans won 3-1. to one. And yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, I'm really happy with the results that I got. A little slow to start to try to find my legs back here shooting again. Uh, but I really think it went well. Um, I got to focus in on what I wanted to focus in on, and I think that's an important thing to, to remember in hockey. You have three periods to shoot. You can focus in on verticals for one period, tight, tight verticals, which I didn't do tonight because I'd like to do it the 302.8, but I focused in on action in front of the net. Then in the second period, I focused in on the goalie, and in the third period, I was just looking for other types of action, trying to find the specific players that I wanted to capture. And they just turned the lights down, so with that, we're going to get to the editing of the photos. So we're back home now. The hockey game was a heck of a lot of fun. I've already gone through and I've edited these images. What I'm going to show you are mostly keepers, but I'm also going to show you images that didn't quite make the cut. Uh, and, and we're going to explain why they didn't make the cut. Going to give you as many tips as I can possible uh, about hockey. Now, I can say that I'm more happy with the results now after they've been edited, sitting here and looking at a 27 inch screen instead of a 3.2 inch screen, the images look so much better. I was worried about the glass playing more of a part in, in, in giving me issues than it actually did. Once I sat here in, in the computer, I could see that the images were a heck of a lot better. So before we move on, I want to remind you guys that if you are looking to pick up the Fronos Photo video guide, the beginner guide to getting out of auto, please be sure to go to fronosphoto.com slash guide to take a look at that because it's going to give you the basics. The, a lot of the education that I put into it is kind of what I did when I went and shot the hockey game, shooting in manual and all of that good stuff. So if you're looking for a way to get yourself out of auto, to learn more about photography right off the bat, check out fronosphoto.com slash guide. And really, it's going to help you out a lot. So let's get right into these images right here. So first shot, this is during pregame skate. Um, Pre-game skate's a good time to practice. It's a good time to test the lighting. And that's exactly what I did. Um, actually, I'm going to turn back over here real quick. What made my editing so much easier going from picture to picture to picture is the fact that the lights were even across the ice and my shutter speeds, apertures, and ISO were consistent the whole night that I could pretty much sync the color all the way across the board. So I could sync the, the, the white balance and, and everything and, and a couple of tweaks and changes. And all I had to do was sync that through everything. And I'll show you how to do that in the computer. And, and basically I was left with just small tweaks that I needed to do with each image. So really it's pretty simple. You would, you would find one image that you liked. You would click on the next one while holding down the command button here on the Mac. And you just hit sync. And I check all and I hit synchronize and the same settings will copy over from one photo to the next. So this is a cool hockey shot to me. This is what you're looking for. This is filling the frame. No images that you're going to see today in this video have been cropped. I'll say it over here. No images have been cropped in post. Well, just simple. Nothing was cropped. Everything was shot and captured in camera. So what you see in these photos on the computer are exactly how I shot them. I filled the frame. So I say it all the time, but if you could do that, the quality of images are going to be so much better. And when you practice composition and you, and you get it right in the camera, it just feels great. So let's look at the settings right off the bat. Um, this was, uh, I believe I was at anywhere between 125th and, and 1600th throughout the whole shoot. Uh, at 3.2, to give me a little bit more depth, instead of 2.8 being so shallow, I went to 3.2 to give me a little bit more leeway to get more in focus from the chest to the face to keep that there. Uh, and I shot at ISO 4000, which is great, and I'm going to turn over here to talk about that. ISO 4000. There used to be a time 
that everybody would yell at me and saying, oh my God, you're, you can only shoot there because you have a D3S or a D3, but guess what? Your cannons shoot it 4,000 without a problem. The Nikon D600 shoots there. The D7000 shoots there. I'd venture to say that the D3200 is going to do it. And same thing with the Canon T T4i. That's a great camera. That's going to shoot at 4,000. So it comes down to putting on good glass to allow yourself to shoot at 4,000 and not have to go higher than that because the 2.8 lenses give you enough light that you don't have to compensate by bumping your ISO and running into noise issues. So I got that out of the way. Let's move through this. This is a hockey shot. What do I look for? The puck. Boom. The puck is in there. Everything's sharp. You can read the Reebok. Look at this. Moving through. The colors are thick. And yeah, there's a little bit of grain here, but that's because we're zoomed in one-to-one. -one. Now when you move back, it looks great. One, one correction in composition, maybe leave a little bit more room down here at the bottom. Um, but other than that, it's, I think the shot is spot on. This shot struck me, and I'm going to talk about this um, one one thousandth of a second, 3.2. I slowed the shutter speed down because the kid was off to the side. Uh, he wasn't right in front of, he wasn't on the ice where the lights were hitting. So where did it start? That's where it started in color. That's where it ended in black and white. And this takes me back to my college years where I took a picture similar to, to this. And why did I do that? Because one of my professors said, Jared, you need to, to look at what's going on around you, not just what's in front of you, but find out what's going on in the stands. Capture the kids, do things like that, find the kids. And that's exactly what I did right here. This kid was here. One thing I could have done better, I love the shot. I mean, I love the focus on the eye right here. And he was moving, so it didn't make it easy to focus, but this is the sharp eye. Primarily, I would have liked to have focused on the closer eye to me, but I didn't, It just because he was moving. Um, I would like to have less headroom here. Uh, sorry, less, I'd like to have more here. Uh, you can see how that's very tight to the edge. If it was just shifted a little bit, but other than that, I, I love this shot. So let's get into some action. So we've got some action here. This, to me, is a little too far across the ice to use a 70 to 200, but it's a usable shot. Um, in a future game, I'll probably break out a 300 2.8. Uh, so 1 25th of a sec, 1 1, 1 12 50th of a second at 3.5. Ah, you can see that I switched the 3.5 to ISO 5000. I guess I was tinkering with my settings beforehand excuse me, to try to find it. So this is what you're looking for. A guy skating around the circle, he's coming back up the ice. This is the captain. Look at this, fills the frame horizontally. Most of the time, with the 70 to 200, you're gonna see better horizontal shots. What I'm looking for in hockey is action. Guys coming around the circle, filling the frame, the puck, things happening around the net. Um, not so much the, the, the static shots, which we're going to talk about in a minute because I took that just to show you, but this is a winning shot. If I was using a 302.8, then I would shoot it vertically, but this is a cool shot. Moving forward, oh, I shouldn't be in the develop tab. Let me go back to the library. So this is what you're looking for. You got the guy racing up the ice. I don't think his feet are on the ice. Uh, uh, something has to be on the ice. He wouldn't be jumping around. Yeah, yeah, this this foot's cutting in. This one's off the ice. You've got a guy coming over here to try to stick check. You can see that he's watching the hands or the chest. You should be watching the chest when you're defending, except he's going up back the ice to, to back check. But that's a cool shot. Very nice, nicely composed. This is what I'm talking about. You're going to be faced with a lot of static shots like this during a game. People standing around doing nothing. They work, they do something. If you're gonna sell pictures to parents, take a couple of these because it's an easy shot to get and parents will probably love it. But in the pro end or, or just everyday shooting, I, I don't like this. It's boring to me unless you capture some action with it. It's static, it doesn't do anything. I don't like it very much and that's about it. Moving forward here, boom. Action in front of the net. This guy's getting cross-checked, boom. I love looking for things going on in front of the net because you get a lot of action. He gets cross-checked here and then he gets hit down onto the ice. I don't know if the guy did get a penalty for that. I don't think he did, um, the ref isn't looking over there, he's looking at the net, oh, I remember what happened, a goal was scored here. So this guy's screening the goalie, the shot's coming from the point, he gets cross-checked down, the puck is somewhere in the net, I can't tell where it is because, well, it's not, it's not there, but I remember it was a goal. Or maybe it wasn't a goal. Was it a goal? Hold on, I'm gonna go back real quick. Was it a goal, because there was something Maybe that one wasn't the goal. Maybe the goal's somewhere. Ah, the goal's further on. Okay, I, I'm sorry. So this is good action in front of the net. You've got the goalie, you've got this guy right here, Nobles, and you got the captain right here. So Nobles took like three penalties in this game. He's, he's kind of chippy, I guess. Um, he deserved them. Uh, yes, he did. 
I challenge you to a duel, but don't don't challenge me to a duel if you really think you didn't deserve them. Uh, he's this is good action in front of the net. There's something going on. Boom! He's getting cross checked down here. He you know follows through with the cross check. Oh yeah, okay, that's why. So a goal was scored right here. Boom! He goes through. He's screening the goalie, which is exactly what you want to do. And the defender's trying to move the net, move the uh, the, the player out of the, the front of the net. But you can see how I'm focused in on the front here. Boom, boom, goal scored. Getting the action going on. These guys coming in. They're happy. This kid's like 12 years old, but he's not. Um, this is going to happen. Guys are going to skate in front of you, and you're going to get shots like this. They're not keepers. This is one that I would actually delete out of my system and never worry about it again. Um, so we got this guy converging on the net. He was the point man. He's coming around the circle. Boom, one shot. Boom, the next shot. I'm turning over to here to talk. Motor driving. I was sitting next to, a, while I was at the game, a fro reader actually came up to me and he hung out with me the whole game and we talked. And he heard me motor driving through a few shots, which we're going to see later around the goalie. And I said, look, if you have an idea of what you're trying to capture, there's a, there's a time and a place to motor drive three, four, five shots. You don't want to go more than that a lot of times because then the action's gone. You can see for this shot, we went from one shot to the next. Um, I didn't motor drive because I waited in anticipation of what was going to happen. He held the shot. He deked, and then he went like that, and then I got the shot. And I'm using continuous focus, by the way. Continuous, nine points, so that it's always trying to find the guy, and he's jumping around, and it works well. Focus in on the goalie. Yes, this is the opposing team goalie. The ref's out of focus, the puck's out of focus, this guy's out of focus, this guy's out of focus, and it looks like the goalie's looking right at me. He's not, he's, he's not, but that's what you're looking for. Still loading, still loading, boom. What is this shot at? Let me get back into the develop module. Um, 12 to the 3.5, yeah, this is where I locked in for most of the game. But this is what you're looking for with hockey. This out of focus guy here, this out of focus guy here, draws you into the goalie, frames you in naturally, and boom, there you go. That's the goalie, goalie making a say, actually the pucks, yeah, you can see the ripple of the net. This was another time where I got a goal. Um, because he's, Nobles is in front of the net again, and the puck went in this time. And boom, oh, jeez, I just saw it. Here it is. <laughs> of course you can see the ripple of the net, and then you see the Powerade bottle popping. That's what you want to see in hockey. Popping the water bottle, that's a win, that's a good shot, boom, moving on. Um, action coming across. You can see the ice. He's, he's throwing on the brakes a little bit. He's shaving it up there. You got this guy coming in. It's a little far away. A 302.8 would be great for that. Usable shot. Very good coming across. Then this guy, Nobles, again, cutting back up the ice. He's a prospect. That's why I focused in and took some pictures of him. Um, the goalie. We got the guys in front of the net again. Always look for action in front. This is okay. I don't mind this stick here. I would love that if it wasn't, but look at the goalie. Look at the five hole. Five hole's wide open. Wide open, but he didn't give up a goal here. Um, and then you can just see the pucks down here. This is what you're looking for in front of the net. Boom. The puck's right here. He blocked it, waffle boarded it away. And then here we go. Is this it? Is this where I do it? No, this isn't it yet. But just, you know, a static shot of the goalie like this. That's a nice shot. That could be used for anything. Promotional. Boom. The puck's over here. Another. Ah, uh, this is good. This guy's winding. He's coming in for the shot. He's in front. You can see the goalie's focus, and you get it. So this is something good, too. Guys going in off a draw. Yeah, I cut their feet off. Not a good thing. I don't think I was really prepped for that. Also, in front of the net, I switched over into single focus. Why? Because I want to focus in on the goalie. I wanted to lock on the goalie and not have anybody skating by take my focus away from the goalie. Because the goalie was what I was going for in the next couple images. You're going to see this. But I switched over to single focus, locked in, and every time he moved like further back or forward, I would refocus, but it was locked in so that I could shoot it and, 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 and just have him and not have anybody take away from the action. So here, let's see. Here we go. Here's some action. This is where I motor drove. One, two, three, four, five. I think it was like six shots. The puck's right here. Boom. This is a good time to motor drive. Hey. There we go. The puck's right here. It's waiting. Goalie's going down into his butterfly. Nobody's blocking the front of the net. The next shot, it's about to hit the waffle board. The shot after that, guy starts converging on the, on the scene. The puck is right here. That's a good shot. The next shot, the guy converges. So this is what's happening in the motor drive. This is not a good shot. It's not usable. The next one, not usable. This one is the end of the motor drive. And... That's it. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six motor driven shots with one usable, two usable, three usable. 
the, the, the first three are great. Now we've got action around the net, which is what you're looking for. We've got all of these guys in the way, and the goalie's right here trying to make the save. Boom. He makes the save on this because I know they didn't score, and this is the action you're looking for. One player, two player, three players, four players in the shot, and five is the goalie. Stick with the puck on it, with ice shedding up. You look at this. This is what you're looking for. That's what you're looking for with a hockey shot. Moving forward, we got more action across the center of the ice. Not the greatest place for some shots, but, you know, I took it anyway. More stuff in front of the net. You can see a theme here. Then I started to focus in on that. Referee doing cross-checking. Static, you know, a guy coming up the ice. It's a good usable shot for the team. Now some action coming across the middle. He's reaching for the puck. He's deking. You've got this guy here and this guy here. See all the ice to the puck? There's probably going to be somebody open. If you have three guys here, I know this isn't a hockey discussion. I shouldn't be telling you, like, where to go to the net. But if, if, if somebody was open to the slot, he's in the slot. But if he got somebody right next to the side of the net, there's probably only two defenders somewhere else. Um, actually, it was probably a power play. I think it was five on three. That's why they're in the triangle. Moving forward, there. That's the pass. I like that shot. This is kind of distracting with him here. And then this is the last shot. This guy getting ready to, to, to put a hook on the guy. But this is action at center ice. Yeah, I said a lot of stuff here. There's a lot to learn from these images. Uh, I'm very happy with the 49 of 174, or is that 43? 43 of 174 that I consider to be keepers. That's a good thing. Um, there were others that would be keepers, but there's sometimes better shots that i rather show than other shots. So hockey is about getting those settings locked in. Because like I always say, once you get your settings locked in, the rest is just shooting getting your composition right. You don't have to worry about making those other changes because you're not worried. This is why you don't want to be an aperture priority because aperture priority would read the ice. It would read for the ice, which would make the shutter speed way too fast, which would make everything too dark. You don't want to do that. That's why manual is great. Getting out of auto is what it's all about. Again, if you would like to check out the Fronos Photo Beginner Guide, which tells you all about getting out of auto, includes four photo shoots of me on an actual shoot Great stuff. Check out fronosphoto.com slash guide. Good information there. But back to the hockey stuff. Very happy with the shooting. Each period I decided to focus on a different thing. Action in front of the net, the goalie, and then just more of action in front of the net and just different things happening in center ice. You have to find your spots around the rink. I found my spot. I stayed there the whole game. I was happy with it. Very happy with the results. Hope this helps you out. If you guys would be interested in a full-on tutorial on hockey photography or sports photography, I'm thinking about putting together a video guide for that. Um, and that is going to be well in depth, you know, another three or four hour video guide. But I think you, there's a lot to be learned from there. Settings, action, and all of that stuff like that. But thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to sign up on the Fronos Photo email list. Don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube so you can get more videos like this. And there you have it. Jared Poland, FronosPhoto.com. See ya. Are you subscribed yet on the YouTube channel? Well, Click this subscribe button right here. Also click this box if you want to be emailed every time I upload a new video so you can get the latest video uploads as they happen. And also, if you haven't signed up for the free user's guide, sign up right here. Put your name, email address in here. Hit send it. You will get a free ebook sent to your email as well as a link to a 60-minute long video on flash photography in the studio that Adam and I created. So please do that. And we'll see you.